We're going to gen up this character in an old-timey western saloon. Clear our table. Hopefully we don't get into a bar fight. If so, then, um, I don't know. Cover me. I'm going to grab a chair and go in swinging. <laughs> All right. We need to come up with a complimentary character to Mulsha. Uh, this will be random. And we will then go on later this week to weave the two characters together in a storytelling exercise. Um, a way to try and challenge our conventions or our standards of storytelling. Um, hopefully, you know, we can roll with anything. Hopefully we end up with a, a vastly different character. But if we don't, um, eh, that's fine. Uh, we... This is going to all lead into an exercise coming up later this week. As, you know, we, we're here, we gather, we're sharing these tales, and then while they're still fresh, let's let's twist them together like a, a nice, delicious pretzel. I almost had a nice, delicious pretzel yes, or, uh, today at Sam's Club. <sighs> I was on a supply run for the store, and, you know, they, they have those there, and I was thinking, I'm like, yeah, it's so cold out, and we have snow here in Ohio right now, and... Something like that would just, you know, it soothes the soul. <laughs> anyway, let's start this uh, process again here. Yep, yep, sponsored by Sam's. Uh, I'm a hashtag sellout. Uh, Sam's Club for all your Sam's needs. Uh, if your name is Sam and uh, you have family members named Sam, that is the place to go for you. <clears throat> all right, pardon me. Race and sub race, coming back to it, 2D10. Let's hit roll. Nine and a three. So this is going to be a tiefling, which are nine. And mm, I'm going to be careful. The, hey, ladies in the background, I hear you. Don't laugh because I was going to type favors D. That is D for devil. Ahem. Keeping this a PG stream. Um, <laughs> gender, and if it's multi-class, remember, 1 to 45 is female. 46 to 90 is male. Okay, looks like we're getting a male tiefling. If Elian says I'd be interested in the adventure building... Uh, we'll get to that. Uh, this this week is going to be a bit of an experiment. And our first one, we were kind of, you know, making characters and, and things would just kind of come up. And what I'd like to do is get in a routine where we are building some characters and then we will talk about a story structure and then we'll we'll get them all kind of squished together uh, in, a, in some way that it makes sense. So this is just the, the next step in that phase of Elium. Uh, so, you know, keep coming by, pay attention. I put this stuff up on my YouTube as well. Which is T H Z Maddie. Uh, Maddie Morgs is the is the Twitch here that you're watching live. But when this shows up on YouTube, it'll show up under that name. Uh, so we have a, a male tiefling that favors his devil half a little bit more or a lot more than his human. That is what we're doing by sub race. Alignment is going to be two percentiles. Roll. Fifty and ninety. This is going to be a another... Oh, no. Okay, this is going to be just on the cusp of chaotic good. A neutral good something. The level is going to be a 1d100. Make sure to change your dice. Roll. It's going to be a 14. 14 on the distribution is level 5. That's pretty solid. Will this character use feats? Let's find out with a D percentile. 45, I do not know. It's stat bumps only. He's only going to have one stat bump, so eh. It's still early, right? Uh, when we go back and maybe revisit some of these characters, level them up, as we tell their stories and things happen, you know, maybe some die and we just let them drop away or others become champions. Um... You know, this this stuff can happen. We don't need to randomly roll. We generated them as such, and if we want to take them in a particular direction, we'll do so at our command. Our class is a D12. Roll it. 
D12s look a lot like D20s uh, for beginning players. Um, be careful which one you grab and roll in, in the heat of the moment. Six. One, two, three, four, five. Ho, ho. We get to play with a monk. And a monk has a D3 archetype. Roll it. A three. Oh, I think that's the elemental savant, isn't it? Oh, is it, is it, is it, is it? I'm bouncing on my seat. Oh, nope, that one's way of shadow. <coughs> Pardon me. That's still a fun one. Way of shadow. Why don't we... Why don't we do this? For consistency's sake. There we go. We're going to change this to a 13 to roll the background while we're here. Background is going to be a 4. 1, 2, 3, 4 is going to be an entertainer or a gladiator. We'll determine which one might be best for him when we get down to that to that part. Uh, they do have... Uh, they have 1d3... This one's a little different. They have 1d3 like talents or the ways that they that they convey themselves. Um, let's roll at least one because even a, even a gladiator will do something. The last one we rolled that had this, uh, she sang in combat as a way to play to the crowds and to flourish in front of everyone. Let's just do this. And come down here. We have a D3. We're, we'll roll it in case this is a... Uh, we want to make him a full-fledged entertainer. Okay, so this is 3. And then we're going to roll a D10 to find out 3. The first one being... 10 and we'll go on from there very cool oh hi Shadzar you need the pressy thing someone else uh, the 12 steps of creating adventures okay um that reminds me of a funny story about a newbie who rolled a natural zero on his attack roll. He picked up a D10. <laughs> so, you know, the D10 uh, used to be in... Uh, oh, yeah. I, I used to have these. In fact, uh, I even know the Zo uh, Zozekahedron um, was an Icosahedron. Easier to do back when D20 and D10 were the same shape. Well, there weren't any real D20s. They were 20-sided, but the ranges were 1 to 10 and 1 to 10. <laughs> Right, and when the 1 to 20 came out, you hate uh, you had people all the time grabbing a d20 and rolling the wrong way. Lots of uh, zero on attack rolls. <laughs> oh, good stories to share. I love it. This is what makes you all amazing. I love I love this. Uh, if any of you popped by uh, last night and was looking for the stream, I'm sorry. I ended up having to uh, apparently take a long rest. And uh, and I'm, I'm back in the saddle for tonight. So thank you for coming by again and being a part of this. Alright, our personality traits... Whoop, not 88. Ooh. <laughs> well, that, that could be interesting. <laughs> Every personality trait, but uh, which one emerges at the right time? Uh, we get two, two D8s. Uh, 8 and 8, okay, well, we get it. So you have 8 and 7. Oh, goodness, pardon me. 3D6s. For our ideals, bonds, and flaws. Five, five, two. Okay, placeholders are set. Come down here. Here is our tiefling line for age. This is going to be a percentile at first. 55, looking on the chart, this is going to be adulthood. Remember, you don't have to put down the stage of life. It's your character at home. I do this as a psychological gateway, or as just a way for us to think about the character when we're creating story. 
Tieflings are about the same lifespan as uh, as humans. So if we go 36 to 60, um, that's about 25. Let's do uh, let's do 2d12 and add that to 36. 13. Okay. Or oh wait, I'm sorry. This is. I was a derp and looking at the percentile for the stage of life. <laughs> uh, that that was determined. I'm sorry. Adulthood starts at 26 and goes to 40, so that's about a 15-year spread. Uh, and so uh, that's fine. We'll we'll stick with this anyway. We got even under that, so plus 13 years. Um, he will be approaching midlife, and will be 30, 39 years old. Down here, Tiefling stats starts at four foot nine and will grow up another two d eight inches. Seven. All right, so the three is going to go and bring us up to five foot, which is going to leave another four left over. So we have five foot, four inches. We're going to take that same modifier and modify it by 2d4, which is three. Three times seven is 21. And we're going to add that to the base 110 pounds. So 131 pounds. Nice and easy. Yeah, that's uh <laughs> Yeah, so the, the the spread here, you know, we have a, a forty one to fifty five, then we're getting old. Uh you know, it, it's sort of a I, I sort of like bell curved it out. Hopefully that makes a little bit more sense. <clears throat> All right, I think we are finished here. Now we get to do some fun stuff. We have our background. Our background is entertainer. I'm going to start by reading the original entry for that first and going from there. <laughs> you thrive in front of an audience. You know how to entrance them, entertain them, and even inspire them. Your poetics can stir the hearts of those who hear you, awakening grief or joy, laughter or anger. Your music raises the spirits or captures their sorrow. Your dance steps captivate your humor, uh, and your humor cuts to the quick. Whatever techniques you use, your art is your life. We're going to get acrobatics and performance. Which, for a monk, isn't too bad. Tool proficiencies. A these guys kit. And some kind of instrument. If we go this route. Which we... I don't know, I think we can. Especially for being like a, a shadow dancer style. Uh, we could do a lot of cool stuff as an entertainer here, too. So think about what kind of an instrument you want this character to have. Uh, equipment is going to be... Instrument? Question marks? Voice going up at the end? We're going to need some kind of favor from an admirer. A love letter, lock of hair, perfume scarf, uh, you know, favorite dagger, whatever. <laughs> we'll need to come up with that as well. Also, what kind of a costume does this person wear? Not necessarily functional clothes, but when, when he's performing, what's his costume? Belt pouch with 15 gapa. A good entertainer is versatile, spicing up every performance with a variety of different routines. Choose one to three routines 
or roll on the table below to define your experience as an entertainer. Um, the original one we rolled... Oh, pardon me. Shame on me. We had a 10. Well, we had a 3. What, what did I put the 10 there for? Was that a second roll? Why am I derping out on this? Oh, good. Good golly. Good golly gracious. <laughs> Castanets for a dancer. You know, I was just, uh, <laughs> I was just thinking that. Uh, I remember someone had um, kind of a Castanets playing bard. It was like a very social, uh, a very social character. And you got the little, like, Oh, the three, derp, that's what it was. We get up to three. The first one was a ten. Uh, as a, Oh, okay, so we have a tumbler. I think we can make him a full-fledged entertainer. Uh, this is sounding really amusing. Let's roll this d10 a little bit more here. Seven and six. Poet and instrumentalist. Now for the personality traits. Eight and seven. Eight was very strong since we got a twice on a, on a D8 roll. Uh, I change my mood or my mind as quickly as I change key in a song. They That's kind of open-ended. Maybe he doesn't change key. Or maybe he does frequently. And seven. I'll settle for nothing less than perfection. A very, you know, kind of uh, obsessed monk entertainer. Our feature by our background here is by popular demand. You can always find a place to perform, usually in an inn or tavern, but possibly with a circus, at a theater, or even a noble's court. At such a place, you receive free lodging and food of a modest or comfortable standard, depending on the quality of the establishment, as long as you perform each night. In addition, your performance makes you something of a local figure. When strangers recognize you in town where you have performed, they typically take a liking to you. That's pretty cool. Um, that is there as a note. Now we have our ideal, which was a five. People. I like seeing the smiles on people's faces when I perform. That's all that matters. Oh, very, very sweet and simple tiefling here. Bonds. Five. I will do anything to prove myself superior to my hated rival more story building stuff now he has a rival and that rival is hated flaws too because we are all flawed beings i'm a sucker for a pretty face very cool Now, the variant entertainer was the gladiator. Um, the gladiator is as, uh, is as much an entertainer as any minstrel or circus performer, trained to make the arts of combat into a spectacle for a crowd and uh, for a crowd to enjoy. This kind of flashy combat is your entertainer routine. You might have some other skills as a tumbler or actor. Um, and so it offers some modifications, but I really like the idea of this monk being. This kind of tumbling, uh, you know, in, like a straightforward entertainer. Uh, we have our information from our background loaded in first. Now let's pop back up to races. And scroll quickly down. Because Tiefling is last here. Base speed, 30 feet. Our racial features... Is dark vision 60 feet? 
we get hellish resistance. Kind of makes me think we should eat fire, right? Though I guess people would expect that, because that, that just that'd be too easy. And Infernal Legacy, which is gonna give us a little bit of limited spell casting. Languages Common Infernal. Hmm. Okay, good. Sorry, pardon the yawn here. When I'm when I'm speaking a lot and I'm still getting used to it here in broadcasting to you all. Um, you know, my it's it, it's an adjustment to make sure that I'm making eye contact with you in the camera, that I'm projecting my voice, that I'm trying to enunciate my words, and make sure that you are having a good time uh, and understanding what I'm saying. This is the first monk that we're getting to gen up for this series. That's really cool. The quick and dirty, if any of you do not know D&D &D monks, uh, you know Kung Fu. You're a martial arts master. And you can manifest that in three different ways. Uh, hit dice are going to be D8s. And so this character is going to have 5D8. And nothing's interrupting that, so we have 5D8. Zero temporary hit points. Weapons, we get simple weapons. Whoop. And short swords. Tools, choose one type of artisan's tools or one musical instrument. Um... I don't know. Well, we can check it out a, uh, a little bit as we continue to build a story. Maybe he has two instruments. Maybe he gets an artisan tool of some kind to make pottery or, or paintings. Uh, paintings could work even. Hmm. Saving throws is strength and dex. Nice and easy. Choose from... Choose two from acrobatics, athletics, history, insight, religion, and stealth. Monks are dex based. Having a high dex is going to be important. Now, uh, we already have acrobatics and we have performance. I think something like stealth, especially because we're rolling a shadowy, a shadowy one. And probably insight. That way, for a performance uh, standard, you know how, you you can read the audience, you can know their feelings. But if you need to translate that into combat, you can tell if someone's kind of giving you the stink eye, or you can tell if someone's lying to you. That kind of a thing. Oh, barbecue says devil chasers for gladiator. They kind of look like they should be a beat stick. Well, I know that, uh, I don't know if you mean the same thing, but they're, they're kind of like, you have the two sticks and you're juggling the third. Is that what you mean? Because I, 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 some people, I think, call them devil sticks. I've never heard them as, as devil chasers, though. Equipment. A short sword or any simple weapon, a dungeoneer's pack or an explorer's pack in ten darts. Explorer's pack will be good for exploring. And a short sword or any simple weapon. Hmm. Oh, there's a lot of stuff here. What would this person What would this person have as Well, for sure, there's darts times ten. 
7d4 plus x piercing. Um, it's going to do bludgeoning damage with his fists. So let's go to equipment real quick and see which simple weapons are available. Oh, pardon me. Guess we could go sickle, and that would give us a little bit of slashing. And I don't think that necessarily interferes with some of our monk powers. Yeah. I don't think we have another character with a sickle on him anyway. An armored defense. Beginning at first level, while you are wearing no armor and not wielding a shield, your AC equals 10 plus your dex plus your wisdom modifier. Those are going to be our two top scores that we're going to want. Uh, martial arts. At first level, your practice in martial arts gives you mastery of combat styles. Okay. There's a lot here for what we're doing. Our class is giving us access, and this is what's going to be causing us to make things different uh, like different types of attacks than a fighter can just swing his fist on someone you can do so with a lot more accuracy than the rules would normally allow and this is why martial arts key key is kind of a magic point pool of potential that you can do Flurry of Blows, you get some nice uh, nice extra attacks in. On our movement, you're extra fast. We also get something really cool called Deflect Missiles. If, if an arrow is coming your way, you can just go nay-nay. Though, depending on how much uh, damage you block, you can actually just end up catching it and flinging it back at the person. Lots of stuff for Monk here. Stunning Strike. And... Key. Empowered Strike. Evasion. Stillness of Mind. Oh, wait, that was seven. We didn't quite get that far. Derp. Only... All right, so we're, we got to go a little bit before the key empowered strikes, because that was a level six ability. Sorry, that one was my fault. Yeah, stunning strike is the last one we get there. All right. Um, Bobica shares a link. He uses these to hype up... Oh, um... Uh, okay, I, I think I, I think I know what, what those are and what you're talking about. Uh, I was thinking of like the... It was kind of a juggling act one, and I think those are just called Devil Sticks. Though before combat... or That, that could be the one. Is that the one that you put on the string 
and you 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 uh, whip it around and it goes like whoa 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 as a way to intimidate or communicate. Because I know there's a didgeridoo also, but that's that's different. Monastic tradition: we're not doing wave the open hand nor the wave the four elements, but we are doing wave the shadow. Right now, it looks like we get Shadow Arts. Yeah, everything else is coming from Monk up to this level. We can uh, uh, spend key points to cast Darkness, Dark Vision, Pass Without Trace, or Silence without providing the material components. And we get Minor Illusion. Okay. Bob, because no, but that sounds cool. Yeah, the, I think they're, um, oh, some friends of mine rolled with them around in a campaign. I, when, what do they call them? I think they called them bull calls or something like that. Uh, as in like B-U-L-L -L space C-A-L-L, -L, like a, a bull call. Um, but it's, it's just this, it's kind of like a really resonant whistle or something that you put on a string and it just goes whoa 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 as you spin it all right a little bit more to the elemental one because you're kind of a caster monk and you get to do you know avatar the last airbender style things Okay, I think this portion is nicely filled in. We'll need to get some details coming in too. Though, let's drop in ability scores. Um, real quick. I believe we're looking at Int and Cha, but just to be safe. Um, nope. Not that far yet. There we go. Intelligence 1, Charisma 2. Okay. Ooh. Alright, so he's going to have to be, for lack of a better term, well-rounded. Um, which is fine. That's There's nothing wrong with that. Hmm. Let's drop our 15 in Dex. Fifteen, fourteen. Thirteen plus two goes to a fifteen. Twelve plus one goes to a thirteen. Then we're just at a 10 and 8 between con and strength. I'd rather have a neutral con and negative strength than the other way around. Actually, before I sign this, we get one stat bump increase as we're starting from first level and going to fifth. That happens at level four. Um... Probably dexterity and I guess we could bump two, but I don't know. That does that just doesn't seem right. I, I almost want to do the one in two to put dexterity at sixteen, and then maybe I know charisma's not the best but he's more of a show showman right now right he's only level five he's um you know maybe he hasn't really hit adventuring just yet so yeah 
Alright, this is how he earns his meals. Very good. Ah, uh, that's right, a bull roarer. Thank you, Bobacus, I appreciate that. Not, not a bull call. Uh, bones are also a simple percussive hand instrument, just two flat sticks with a slight curve to them. Thank you for, uh, again, for finding bull, uh, bull roarer. All right. Well, whatever that guy thought was funny. Couple more things to fill in. Let's quickly scroll through the puduff. At level 5, our proficiency bonus is a plus 3. Monk with 5 key. We've already taken care of the features. So what's left now... Are the other attacks okay well we, I mean we can fill that in as we come to it eight is a minus one oh however plus proficiency is a plus two Ooh. there we go dexterity three plus three is six Plus zero. Plus one. Plus two. Plus three. Passive perception here is going to be... 12, because our perception is 2. Let's take this down into our other wisdom-based skills. Plus 2 for survival. Five for insight. There's only one strength. That's an easy one. Minus one. Let's type in here. Minus one. Dex is a plus three. Oh, there's another wisdom we missed. Plus two. Let's, let's remind ourselves down here. Plus two. Three plus three is a plus... Whoop, not five. Plus six for acrobatics. That's pretty good. Okay, not proficient in that one. Okay. That one just gets a uh, straight up plus three. This one is. This one gets a plus six. Int is a plus one, so we're not a dummy. What else? Here we go. Here we go. That should leave Charisma as the last one's left. So that's going to be a plus three. A plus three. A plus six. And a... Three. There we go. Okay, cool. Skills and saves are filled in. Uh, let's get this taken care of. We'll button this up really quickly. Plus one. We get that. And a plus three for our chaw. Now that we have this, hit points are going to be easy uh, because we have eight plus con mod. So it's going to be eight for first level. 
And uh, then it's going to be 4 times 5 is 20, so 28 maximum. He is sitting on all 28. Initiative is going to be the uh, dex bonus. And lastly, unarmored. Uh, this is 10 plus dex plus whiz. So that's 15 also. Very neat. Okay, that's taken care of. Let's clear this out so you all can start thinking of names and other details. Um, oh, yes. As we are proficient, this is going to be... Sickle's still strength-based, eh. So, a plus two. Darts are dex, however, so this is going to be a plus six. Whoop. Actually, there's a bit of a damage penalty here. Because he's not the strongest. Okay. There we go. That looks better. Uh, so we'll need things like an instrument or a tool. A couple have been brought up here. Uh, bull roar, bones, and um, devil chasers. Which is... That would be very interesting considering that... Uh, <laughs> that'd be considering that... Uh, uh, tieflings uh, using something uh, called that. Um, oh well. No armor, simple weapon. Yep, alright, we have all that. Cool. Alright, so we made this one pretty easy. Uh, there's a couple things that we can still fill in. Oh, the last instrument that makes sense is a puili. I have not heard of a Puili either, Bobicus. If you have a link, though, I will gladly kick on it and... Uh, or uh, I'll gladly click on it and pull it up and see what... what happens. Uh, and this is going to end up being our traveling companion to the half-orc that we just generated. And any differences that come up are going to be wonderful plot lines for the story that we're going to make with them a little bit later in this week's sessions. For the skin, I'm getting kind of a um, like a rusty brown. So it's like this reddish brown, you know, very rich. It draws the eye. Um, maybe even with uh, bright freckles. So the monotony is broken up with these little, like, maybe almost like yellow freckles that belay the the tieflings. Um, I mean, it's still a tiefling, but it just, it's this evidence that I was once a fiery being and this is what's going on with me. Basically, it's a bundle of sticks, but more instrumenty. Okay, and is that you just, like, clack them together then? Hair? I don't know. I don't think he has hair. It just seems to fit. I mean, we, yeah, we have the devil, and so he's he's still gonna have his uh, his horns. I don't know. I, I just don't see this tiefling having hair. And for eyes, let's see, an entertainer, a tiefling. Um, tieflings don't normally have, like, pupils, 
So if we were to go for a solid color, remember you have to watch the direction of their of their head in a cutscene or in something else in order to really know which way they're looking. Um, so what would eyes be that I could... You know, yellows, oranges, that all makes sense. Maybe... Um, oh, Bob says they're against the shoulder. What if we went green like burning rubies? Oop, I mean, maybe I'm thinking of like the, the overarching classification for them. There we go. Green like burning emeralds. That, that'll be cool. Nice, you know, faceted look and... Oh, uh, bright lustrous blue. That's that's sure. Let's put uh, let's do this. I want to know what jokes are telling in the background. That lady's. If you heard, like you, you close your eyes, you're like. Maybe I can tell, maybe I can tell. No, I couldn't tell. Lustrous blue. Um. Why, why don't I have a blue gemstone coming to mind? But I don't know, like they're sparkly and fiery, like they have this passion in them. But I don't know, maybe the, maybe the bright will just convey that. Bright blue eyes, so these bright blue eyes set against this rusty brown with like, maybe like a, 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 a spatter of yellow freckles, and he's bald. Sapphires, derp, that's it, thank you. There we go, lustrous blue, sapphires, as eyes. Cool. All right, we need a name for this character, and he's pretty well done. There's a couple racial spells that he gets um, that I'm gonna I'm gonna end up filling those in a little bit later. As I'm going through in the old PDFs, I'm gonna reformat them in a way to make them a little bit more readable, like this. Even the higher level characters we generated, uh, and then after that, I'm gonna get this Dropbox thing open so we can share. Uh, so, all right, we have a Tiefling who has a, whatever, a fusion devil human name, if we wanted to have it. Maybe he has a name he was given in the monastery, um, and maybe he has a stage name after he was uh, taken in to be raised by the circus. What kind of a name would you like to see uh, this kind of a, a monk or this kind of a character? Uh, feel free to type anything, whether you've been here lurking or you've been in here chatting. Bobicus is suggesting African plus tiefling or Hawaiian plus tiefling. That would be kind of weird if you're going to combine syllables or whatnot. Um, as well. Hmm. Maybe this one doesn't have three names as not to confuse it, even though there's no confusion, but as to not confuse it with the prior character. But yeah, just throw whatever out there. You can be thematic about it. You can look up uh, a baby name generator, an RPG name generator. Heck, I even linked to one uh, down below. Do, do, do. Make sure you're doing that here. So we, we had the saloon for a little while. Herm. Let's travel to a dwarven city where it's it'll be kind of warm. Hmm, what would he be called? He'd be like brother so-and-so, or he would be um, just known by something simple, like strike, or... Hmm. Got these bellows. 
thinking up or we're, we're cooking up some names some brain juices For reference, in the PHB, because while I do ask you all for input, because I, I consider these our characters, the PHB does offer some names. Oh, Babaka says, Kona Ias Amad Amadeus. Uh, are those based in real words? And if so, like what, what do they indicate or what do they mean? Even if they're only partials of something. We can try these. Kona Ias. Oops, that's Jonah, yes. That might get me killed in a country. Oops. Kona Ias Amadeus. Brother of the, the secret shadow way. That's cool. You know, bald. I, I think he's still gonna have his horns. He just his. He's just choosing to shave his hair off. Besides, it'll make the disguise kit he carries a little bit easier to wear, won't it? <laughs> it's just a uh, generic tiefling. Amadi apparently means he seems destined to die at birth. Oof. All right. So, a little bit more there to do, but I need to get up and I need to, you know, just like stretch and move a little bit more. And then, uh, after about, I'm going to take a, a short one, like just like five minutes, not even ten. I'm going to get up, I'm going to stretch, and then we'll come back and we'll do a little bit of a roundup, a little Q&A, open dialogue, and we'll finish out the evening. So, I will be back shortly. See you soon.